Hi guys, welcome to this session in a Microsoft project. In this module, I want to show you how you can customize the Gantt chart, this part of the screen on the right. So first of all, I've got a few tasks listed here so you can see the Gantt chart populate in there with those blue bars. I've just moved this across a little bit. The first thing you can do is you can get the names, task one, task two, task three, etc., to appear next to the blue bars. To do that, you can double click on the white part of the Gantt chart and this will come up, box styles, or you can go to Gantt chart format and you have box styles in there. Box styles there. And then the same box comes up. So once this box is on the screen, if you go down, so I'm on the task at the top, that's the normal one, you can see it there. If you go down to where it says text, and instead of having resource name there, I'm just going to type the letter N, which will put name in there, which means task name. And then when I click OK to that, you can see the task names next to each of the bars. Now the top one hasn't done that because if I go back into it, the summary bar, this one, is a separate thing. So if I go back there, there's nothing showing there, but if I type N, it will put the project A as a label there. So that's what you can do with that. Now what you can also do is add extra columns, which will show extra bars on the Gantt chart. So let's say that task one repeats across a series of periods, but you don't want it to come down here. It's not a common thing, this, but you can use some of the custom fields. So the field I want to use is the flag field. So if I click on this and type the letter F and go for flag one, that'll put, um, it's normally no, I've just already been in this. I'll put it back to no, because I've already been into it. Comes in as no. And then what you can do is use this flag field or any of those flag fields to trigger another bar on the same line now before i do the dates for it let me just go into this again i'm double clicking on the white and i'm going down to the bottom of this little table to get myself a space so this line here you can see all these spaces these are all for you to do if you so wish so that's the appearance it's going to be gray but i'll pick it so it's at that color, whatever that color is. Do the same for all the way across, like so. And you've now got to select what is the trigger, basically, which is going to be flag one in this example. So I've typed the Fs and flag one. Went to finish, not flag one. And then not the task start date, because that is what this is. I want to use start one as a date. So start one. Now these dates are used, these fields are used if you save an interim plan, which is an old way of doing like a mini baseline where you could just save dates, sets of dates. Now you can save baselines with lots more information in there. And then I want finish one just scroll up to finish one like so now I'll click OK to that now I need to add start one the column start one and finish one just type in the first letter finish one there she is and then if I put a date in there, so that's starting on the 18th, so I'll go forward a bit, so it's, say, say it's going to repeat on the 2nd, and it's just a one-day task, so let's put that to the 2nd as well. Now, it's not showing at the minute because the flag, which is the trigger for it, is on no, and if I put that to yes, you can see now that it does appear. And if I do that for all these other ones, just put them to yes for now, so they can repeat. There is some limitations to doing this. It's more of a visual than an actual practical project feature. If I go for the 26th on that one, and let's extend it a little bit 
to the 29th you can see that one sitting there and I'll push this forward into the next month go for the 9th finish on the next month 12th so that moves across and then the last one get that to start on the 3rd and finish on the 5th or something like so so these only appear if you've got this set to yes so you could just create yourself a little gantt chart with which was just running off flags or even some of the other fields and then you can just tick them on yes or no and it will see how that is going to be and you could obviously use that to measure against these there are tools to do that actually in project so it's not a, it's not a use you shouldn't really be doing that if you are using project because there are tools where you can look at a baseline and see the movement from it but that's all I want to talk about in this little video how you can add your own fields triggered by a flag and show a bar on the same line as the default tasks so hopefully that's of use to some of you thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one